This is Scott with another Barefoot Bible, and today's question comes from my son, so I am thrilled to answer this question. This question. This question. <laughs> the question is, how did the plants survive the flood? Because Noah was told to bring the animals on the ark, not the plants. Now, this video is not going to argue for a literal interpretation of Genesis and a literal worldwide flood. That's a different video. I'm going to go ahead and assume that Genesis is true because, yes, I'm one of those people. Now, let's get into it. Option number one is it could have been miraculous. Maybe God just preserved the plants under the water or the seeds or some such thing in a way that goes outside of the bounds of normal physical laws, normal rules of nature. I'm not saying, well, I don't know, I guess God did it. There's no reason to look any further as some critics will accuse Christians of doing. What I am saying is in a universe where God does perform miracles, we have to allow miracles as one of the possible explanations. So that's one. One option is that the plants back at that point in time may have been much hardier than they are now. See, when you look at the timeline from a creationist point of view, a literal Genesis interpretation, you start with the very best you have, and then after the curse of sin and death, when they eat the fruit, um, everything starts to break down. And over time, you have mutations and problems in DNA copying, well, I guess that would be a mutation, that enter into the gene pool and they weaken the organism overall. You also have specialization as, um, say, one type of bear moves into a very cold Arctic climate and all of the excess DNA is done away with over time, just natural selection, and what you're left with is you know, a polar bear. And then if you were to try to reintroduce that into a more tropical environment where some other bears are, it couldn't live there anymore. It's lost the genetic robustness to live in this variety of places. So in the, in the literal Genesis interpretation, you would start with animals that they have all of that genetic hardiness. They have all of the different genes they need for a variety of situations. Um, and it's only now that, that we don't have the complete set. So plants at that time may have been well adapted for living in fresh water, salt water, brackish water, for being submerged for a long time in, in water, for living in flood conditions. We should also remember that the ocean may not have been as salty at that point as it is right now. Um, according to my understanding, as salt is deposited into the ocean and then some salt also leaves the ocean, there's a net increase in saltiness. So each year the ocean is getting just a bit saltier than it was in the past. So go backwards and the ocean should be less salty than now. So there, so there would be less of a difference between fresh water and salt water. Hey, by the way, I guess I won't get into it very deeply, but that's one of the uh, evidences for a young earth is the salinity of the ocean. See, um, if the ocean is gradually getting saltier just a bit more every year, if you started billions of years ago, even if the ocean started with 0% salinity, if the, now if the rates and processes were uniform, which young earth creationists believe that the, the processes don't have to be uniform, some things can be faster and some, they can slow down at different points, but if they were all uniform, then uh, by this time the ocean would be so salty you could walk across the top of it. And it's not. You should also keep in mind that those plants that needed to survive, they weren't underwater for a full year. Um, depending on how long it took for the floodwaters to rise and cover the whole earth and how long it took for them to recede, it could be something like six to seven months, definitely no longer than nine months. Um, it's still a lot of months, but it's not a full year, so we need to keep that in mind as well. It may have been that the adult plants themselves had not survived, but only their seeds or cuttings. Um, some of the seeds could have survived on the ark with Noah. Now, he wouldn't have brought them for the purposes of replanting. At least, we're not told that in the Bible. We're told about the animals. But he did bring on food for his family. He brought on food for animals. And some of those would be grains, which are the seeds. And uh, they could have been passed out after Noah's family left. They would have been passed out through the the poo of the animals. And then they, they uh, several of them would have remained fertile and they would have grown. Of course, when they left the ark, uh, they would have needed plants, as some of the herbivores would have needed plants right away. They couldn't have waited for the plants to grow. Fortunately, the plants had eh, somewhere around four months to grow from the time that the ark struck Mount Ararat and the waters were receding around it. Uh, so they would have had time for quite a bit of plant growth for the herbivores to eat. 
I've read of studies where, where seabirds have been floated in ocean water for some number of months and then um, the seeds taken out of the, the bird's crop and planted they, they remain viable. Seeds could also have stayed viable by um, floating on just debris mats, uh, knocked over trees or twigs or anything less dense than water that would have floated at the top. Could have had dirt and seeds mixed in with them. They could have had some plant cuttings that started to root and they'd have just chilled out there, drinking up some water. Now the real definitive answer, we don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. Maybe it was one of the things I listed. Maybe it was something I didn't mention, hadn't thought about. Maybe it was a combination of factors. For now, we have to content ourselves with some theories or educated guesses, and we're just not provided with the answers. <laughs> but we don't have to feel like it was some kind of impossibility. We don't have to feel like the lack of a specifically stated answer somehow shakes our faith in God or our faith in the scriptures. Because there are several possible ways that the plants uh, and that the seeds and the plants survived through the flood and remain viable and you know we still have them today. So what do you think? Are there any other possible ways that the, that the plants could have survived the flood? Are any of the ways that I mentioned, are any of those less likely where you think, no, that, no, that wouldn't have happened, that couldn't have happened? Let me know in the comments and if you have any more questions, I want to know because I want to take a shot at answering those. Hey, I'm going to do something very out of character for me as an introvert, and that is to ask you to hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe share the video. If you like this video, if you think I had information that was worthwhile, go ahead and do those things and help me get to my goal of 1,000 subscribers. I picked a goal of 1,000 subscribers because I figured that's a huge number, way more than I just have friends that would politely hit the like and subscribe button. 